Mm, I have to finish it. There's a bakery in Los Angeles where you can find some of the tastiest Tres Leches cakes, sweet and savory pastries, and Cubanos. If you're from LA, you, you should know about Porto's. You have to get a whole cake. Don't get a slice, get a whole cake, because if you get one slice, you're going to have to come back and get another slice, another slice, so get a whole cake. It's the restaurant favorite for this type of food, the food Cuban, American. I'm an LA native. I actually grew up like two minutes away from this Glendale Porto, so coming here is something that's so normal and routine for me. But this place is more than just a neighborhood favorite, so let's go see what makes Porto's one of the most legendary Cuban bakeries in LA. Porto's Bakery and Cafe was opened in Southern California in 1976 by a woman named Rosa Porto, a Cuban immigrant who started baking and selling cakes from her home. Today, there are five locations across Southern California. We got a glimpse inside the kitchen as the team preps their classic Cuban sandwiches, a must try here at Porto's. The team sells about 45,000 Cubanos a month across all locations. If you haven't had a Porto's Cuban sandwich, you don't know what a Cuban sandwich is supposed to taste like. What's your favorite part about the Cubano sandwich? The pickles, the, the mustard, the cheese, the meat, it's like slow roasted. All right, so this is our process on preparing the pork legs for roasting. As you can see, we, we wrap it with fresh garlic and extra virgin olive oil, a little bit all over. And then we have this dry wrap, which is uh, salt and black pepper and brown sugar and dried oregano and a little bit of cumin. So once they get in the oven, we roast them at very, very, very low temperature overnight for about nine hours. So that way the, the meat that comes out is very moist, doesn't get too dry. You have to get ahead of time, get off, um, ahead of the game a little bit, so we pre-make like a 10, 20 at the time, and then we'll, uh, we press them as needed. So we're gonna put a little bit, a little layer of beautiful butter, and then we're gonna go with a lightly smoked ham. Next, we're gonna put in some of the pork legs that I showed you before. We're gonna put a little bit of Swiss cheese. Cheese and pickles. And pickles. Oh. And then on the top part of the bread, we're gonna put in a little bit of what we call Cuban dressing, which is a mayonnaise, mustard, and a little bit of cilantro. Wow. This sandwich is like layers of perfection. I feel like every ingredient has a specific purpose. And the bread makes it all perfect. It has like a crunch, but it's also so soft that it doesn't like scrape the top of your mouth. It's classic, it's simple. The perfect pairing to any Cubano, or really any sandwich at Porto's, are the plantain chips. The team goes through 80,000 pounds of fresh green platanos every month. Once the slices are fried, they're lightly sprinkled with garlic salt. It's so garlicky, it's so good. If you're a garlic lover, the plantain chips are already coated with garlic salt and with their sauce, it kind of just like elevates it to another level. It's fantastic. And a visit to Porto's is never complete without an order of... Potato balls. Potato balls. Potato balls. Potato balls all day long. That's what people drive miles and miles to get those potato balls. Everywhere that I go, I do shows and they, where are the potato balls? Did you bring potato balls? And we want to introduce new items, but they don't, they don't care about trying new items, but they want their potato balls. So this is a picadillo that goes inside our potato balls or paparillenas. It's ground beef with uh, peppers and onions, lots of garlic, cumin, and a little bit of tomato sauce, a little bit of white wine, then we let it simmer. And then this is the picadillo that we were just making before, which is now cold, and uh, we just put it in the middle and fold the potatoes around it, and then it goes into egg wash, and then into the breadcrumbs. 
The potato balls are then deep fried and ready to go. Okay, here's the thing, I always eat this really hot and I feel like I have no patience and I end up burning my mouth, but I don't care because I keep eating because it's so delicious, but here we go again. <laughs> mm. I have to finish it. They're always warm and they're always like crispy on the outside and then soft on the inside. So yeah, they just like remind me of kind of like um, home comfort food. So yeah, they're really good. Over the years, the team has built on Rosa's recipes, like her classic tres leches cake. The best seller is the milk and berries cake, which consists of a sponge cake base soaked with tres leches and filled and topped with whipped cream and fresh berries. You know, at the beginning it was just tres leches with meringue on top, the original one. And then we gave it whipped cream to make it less sweet for the people who like the sweet and the less sweet. This is like the birthday cake we'd always order. It's so good. The fruits really do cut into the sweetness. Personally, I've had every single birthday cake since I was like three years old from Porto, so they mean a lot to me. So my mom started this business really out of necessity. Back in Cuba, under communism, horrible conditions because my dad was taken to a labor camp and she was, you know, let go from her job. And so she did this in order to survive because there's nothing else she could do. When you apply to leave the country, you immediately became the enemy of the state. So they didn't care whether you live or not. And it took us eight years to get out. So for eight years, my mother was in charge of keeping us alive. She was the head of the household. My dad making $8 a month away from the home really couldn't support us. You know, necessity is what many times makes people do incredible things, right? Rosa Porto passed away in December 2019. But the Porto family, including Rosa's three kids, are carrying on the Porto's bakery tradition. The more people talk to you, the more you realize how many people she was able to reach and the legacy that she's left. Because how many immigrants come to this country in 40 years get to be a household name? We're very happy that she gets that kind of recognition in her community that she did so much for. It's a good thing for all of us. We're very proud.